are new disturbing developments out of Washington tonight regarding the president's belief that he has the legal authority to assassinate U.S. citizens. Incredibly enough, it appears that our commander-in-chief actually believes that authority exists not only on foreign soil, but right here on American soil as well. Now, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, who has been outspoken on the issue, recently asked the White House to clarify its position on how unmanned drones can be used to target Americans. Well, today he finally got his response in a letter sent by uh, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, who's America's top cop, he explains, quote, it is possible, I suppose, to imagine an extraordinary circumstance in which it would be necessary and appropriate under the Constitution and applicable laws of the United States for the president to authorize the military to use lethal force within the territory of the United States. In other words, yes, President Barack Obama has the ability to order the assassination of an American citizen on American soil. Pretty incredible. Joining me now with reaction is none other than uh, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. So the president has the power to authorize lethal force, a drone strike against a U.S. citizen on U.S. soil without a trial. This is the same people that (laughs) wanted to give Miranda rights to enemy combatants and constitutional rights to enemy combatants? Well, you know, I find it particularly disturbing. In fact, one of the things I actually admired about the president when he ran for office was that he believed that we should have warrants before we tapped people's phone, that we should have some due process. So he wants a warrant to tap your phone, but he wants no judicial oversight to kill an American. And I think what's important about this is listen to what his response is. His response is, we haven't killed any Americans yet. We don't intend to, but we might. And that's pretty disturbing. And the the thing about the drone strike program is we're not talking about someone's actively attacking America. We're not talking about planes flying into the World Trade Center. What we're talking about is you're eating dinner in your house. You're eating at a cafe or you're walking down the road. That's when these drone strikes can occur. It's not about people involved in combat. It's about people who they think might be. And if you're an American and you're accused of a crime, one of the basic principles, one of the protections we've always had is you get a trial. That's an accusation. You don't get convicted without a trial. Well, there's been past instances where the issue of military force against American citizens on U.S. soil has been brought up as it relates to Posse Comitatus. And the Randy Weaver case was one. The, The case of the Branch Davidians was another case. Don't we have laws preventing that from happening? Yeah, after the Civil War, we passed a law, the Posse Comitatus, that says the military doesn't act in the U.S. So even if there is an active, ongoing threat of someone, it's usually the FBI or the police. And the main purpose for this was that they didn't want the military to act where police act differently. Even in the middle of the night here in Washington, D.C., if someone's accused of rape, you call a judge. So it's not the police making the decision, it's the police in conjunction with the judge getting a warrant. But now we're talking about one step further. We're not talking about searching someone's house. We're talking about actually an execution or killing of an American on our soil. And I cannot believe that they can't answer this question. They're saying basically yes, they think they have And this is a lot different. The law enforcement would have the right to kill somebody if their lives were threatened. Well, nobody's, nobody's questioning that, but that's Absolutely. not what we're talking about here, and that's not what they're saying. Let me, let me show, I want you to deal with the hypocrisy of all of this, Senator, if I can for a minute, because I want you to, for all the people now that are silent, the silence is deafening, as a matter of fact, on this license to kill, basically. This is the next generation of surveillance. For the first time, we actually have permission from the government to show the basic capabilities. It is important for the public to know that some of these capabilities exist. Engineer Giannis Antoniades designed the new sensor, known as Argus. With 1.8 billion pixels, it's the world's highest resolution camera. Argus fits inside this pod that attaches to the belly of a UAV. But because much of the work is classified, we can't see the sensor itself. Because we are not allowed to expose some of the pieces that make up the sensors, so you get to look at pretty plastic curtains. Also known as wide area persistent stare, Argus is the equivalent of having up to 100 predators look at an area the size of a medium-sized city at once. 
This image was taken 17,500 feet above Quantico, Virginia, and covers 15 square miles. This whole image is at a very, very fine resolution. So if we wanted to know what is going on in any spot along this image, say near this building at this intersection, we can generate a moving image that shows what's going on in the area. Simply by touching the screen, Antoniades has opened up a window showing a detailed area while still maintaining the broader context. And everything that is a moving object is being automatically tracked. The color boxes represent that the computer has recognized the moving objects. You can see individuals crossing the street. You can see individuals walking in parking lots. There's actually enough resolution to be able to see the people waving their arms or walking around, what kind of clothes they wear. And you could pick the location of where you produce these images anywhere in the entire field of view. Antoniades can open up to 65 windows at once and can see objects as small as six inches on the ground. From even 17,500 feet, the white thing that you see flying around is a bird. Argus streams live to the ground and also stores everything, a million terabytes of video a day, which is the equivalent of 5,000 hours of high-definition footage. So you can go back and say, I would like to see what happened at this particular location three days, two hours, four minutes ago, and it could actually show you exactly what happened as if you were watching it live. We've endured too many of these tragedies in the past few years. As a country, we have been through this too many times. The majority of those who died were children, beautiful little kids. They had their entire lives ahead of them. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, kids of their own. Among the fallen were also parents and grandparents sisters and brothers of these little children. And they need all of us right now. And we're going to have to come together and take meaningful action to prevent more tragedies like this, regardless of the politics. May God bless the memory of the victims. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. You think I'm joking?